Thank you for joining me today. This video is a tutorial for all students that are involved in our Sand Springs Virtual Academy or our Charles Page High School Credit Recovery Program. And what we'll be talking about in this video is the use of the Odysseyware curriculum. Students should be logging into this software every day and whether you're logging in from home or whether you're logging in at school, the thing you need to know about Odysseyware is that no matter what district or what school is using the curriculum, all the login pages look the same. So if you have trouble logging in and it says your, your account is unavailable or you cannot get in, please make sure that you've typed in the web address exactly as it appears here and then try logging in again. This system is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you want to put in extra time beyond your work schedule during the day or beyond your time in the lab at the high school, it is available to you as long as you have a computer and internet from home. And if you have trouble with your password or if you've forgotten your password, you can always contact myself or the teacher in your lab. Now, like I said, this video is to help you be successful in the program, so please make note of some of the tips that we provide here and um, jot them down so that you can use them throughout the year or refer back to your syllabus that's been given to you. Now, I'm going to be using a demo account, so I'm going to go ahead and log into this account and show you some of the features that are available inside this program. Uh, the first thing that you'll see when you come into the program is probably the help menu. Now on the help screen you'll see the what's new tab open up first and this has a video tutorial that's provided by the Odysseyware company. It covers some of the same tips that we're going to go over in this video but if you'd like to refer to that you can always go back to the video by clicking on help and going to what's new. If you don't want to see this video when you log in every time, just make sure that you uncheck the always show after sign in box. Then we have the FAQ box and it goes over some of the frequently asked questions about the system in case you run into problems. You can always refer to this if you have questions. Now for now we're going to go back to the learn tab and on the learn tab you'll see that you have two menus at the top. One is assignments and one is courses. I'm going to start with courses because this is the most important. Courses list all the classes that you're currently taking online with the Sand Springs Virtual Academy and Credit Recovery Program. From here you can view both your score and your current level of course progress. Always make sure that you're keeping up with course progress as outlined by your teacher. And you need to make sure that you look through this periodically to understand how many assignments are due for your course throughout the week and each day. If you click on courses, you'll see that I have two courses here. If I were to click into this algebra class here, I can see each of the units that are found in that semester of work. And then if I click on a unit, I can see all of the assignments that are due. Now, since this is a summer program, uh, you'll notice that there are four assignments due. That's because we're in lab four hours a day, and that's one assignment per hour. But for the most part, you'll notice that there is usually about one assignment due per class per day or at least per hour of instruction online. You need to make sure that you complete all work that's given to you and that you complete it by the date that it is due. And if you want to see what's due on a daily basis for all courses, then go over to the assignments tab and you can see that this is a quick glance of both of my courses and what is currently due. The thing you have to keep in mind is if you do not turn in your work by the date that it's due, then it will show up again and it will be in yellow and it will say overdue. All overdue work must be completed first before you move on to new work. The key to being successful in the program is to make sure that you stick to your due dates, you complete your work on time, and that you log in and work every day. If you do that, you won't have to worry about following behind. Now what you're going to notice here that's different about this assignments tab is it gives me the appearance that for today, May 28th, there's only one assignment due in this class. But what you have to keep in mind is that in order to keep you on the right path and understanding the content as you go through the course, only one assignment is given to a student at a time. Only one assignment is unlocked at a time. And new work will unlock once you complete current work. Because if you notice, if we go back to the Courses tab, in this specific class, Personal Financial Literacy, Unit 1, there are actually four assignments due today. And the system wants me to complete this one and pass it before I move on to the next one. 
So always make sure that you refer back to your assignments menu and you look at the due dates before you log off for the day. Now the other thing you'll notice is that it has given me a project and this project is not due until June 1st which is next week. Projects are always assigned early so that students have plenty of time to work on the project and get them in by the assigned due date. Overdue work, as I said, will show up if you don't turn in your work on time, but also keep in mind that if you complete an assignment and you fail that assignment or you score below the passing threshold, it will be reassigned to you. All students are given three attempts to pass a lesson successfully. If you complete an assignment but fail it, it will be reassigned to you and it will show up as overdue here. Next, we're going to take a look at the message feature. And if you have questions about your work, you do have an inbox where you can see messages that have been sent by teachers, but you can also send a message to a teacher. I suggest that you check your messages daily to make sure that you don't have unread messages. And the way you'll know you'll have a message is that it will be signified by a red number at the top of the message box. You can also compose messages and send them to teachers. Just make sure that you choose your teacher and then type a subject line and give a complete description of the question that you have before sending it to your teacher. If you have a question about a specific assignment, make sure that you reference the unit number and the assignment number when asking questions. Now above all, if you have a question and you're in an actual lab setting with a teacher, you don't necessarily need to use this message feature. Just walk over to the teacher and ask questions if you have them. But if you do send a message to an online teacher, please give them about 12 to 24 hours to respond to that message. Now if we're ready to move on and do work, all you have to do to complete an assignment is to click on the name of the assignment and it opens that assignment up. Always make sure that you read the assignments completely. One of the things that we find that keeps students from being successful is that they don't read the assignment and they jump straight to the questions and try to answer those without reading the assignment. If you don't like reading the assignment, you can always highlight the words on the page and plug in some headphones to your computer and click the Speak As tool at the right hand side of the screen. You can then choose a voice and have it read out loud to you, as you see here. Imagine that you have invested some money and you receive a financial report in the mail. Now that is one option, and then some students like to print off lessons and read them on paper before they complete them. So if you go to the tools at the right, you can also click the print button and you can print the assignment. You can also print notes that you've made in the margin or any notes that your teacher has left for you in the margin of the assignment. As for notes, as you go through an assignment, all you have to do to leave yourself a note for reference later is to click in the left margin next to the writing, type your note, and then click Save. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, if you're finished reading a section, you have two options. You can either work on the questions for that section, or you can read the next section. You can choose to do whichever one you want as long as you make sure that you read all sections before answering questions. Here I'm going to click work on questions and it takes me to the questions for this section. If however during the answering of these questions I still don't understand the content, I can go back to the section and refer to that language in the lesson at any time and then click back on the question section and go back and forth kind of like having the book and the worksheet open together at the same time. If reading the section does not help you and you still can't answer the question, you can also go to the bottom of the page and click the Ask for Help button. This allows you to send a direct message from the question to your teacher that's assigned to that course. Just make sure that you type a complete question and that you're clear about what you have problems understanding and then click Send. If you need to close this box, just click the Ask for Help button again. When you're finished with an assignment, click the Turn It In button. It will ask you if you're sure that you want to turn in your work, and if you've left questions unanswered, it will tell you. So make sure to go back through the lesson and make sure that all questions are answered before you move on. If you're satisfied that you're ready to turn in your work, then you can click Yes, Please, and the assignment will be turned in for you. At this time, I'm going to go back to the Assignments menu and I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you'll need to know. 
Remember, we started off in the Courses tab, looking through the units of our course to see how many assignments were due each day. The other thing I want to show you inside here is that when it is time for me to take the quiz over this unit, one way that you can go back and study is to click on the assignments prior to a quiz and review the questions and answers and use those to prepare you before you take the quiz. Always do this whether it is a quiz or a test. The key thing to remember about the Odysseyware curriculum is that students are given three attempts to complete lessons, two attempts at quizzes, and one attempt at tests. Students should need no more than these number of attempts to complete their work. If you're having trouble and you're still not passing your lessons, quizzes, and tests, it is more than likely that you need to spend more time reading the assignments before you attempt questions. So please make sure that you take your time and get the work done completely the first time. That will give you a greater chance of being successful in your work. Now at this time, I want to take the time to show you a little bit about the writer tool. With this project, the student will be required to turn in a written assignment. If I click on this assignment, and after reading through the assignment, I click on work on questions, I'll be taken to the writer tool. With the writer tool, students have the ability to type their answer in the writer box and then receive feedback before turning it in. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, I've started my assignment and I've typed in part of my response, but I'm going to throw in a couple of misspelled words. Now, as you can see here, I've typed a sentence with several misspelled words, and there's also a phrase in here that is grammatically incorrect. If I click on the refresh button, the system underlines grammar mistakes in blue, and it underlines misspelled words in red. If you want to click on the blue with your right mouse button, you can see which grammar mistake you've made. In this case, this is a complex expression, and I can change it if I want to before turning it in. The red ones are misspelled words, and if I right-click on them, it gives me the correct spelling, which I can change it to. Keep in mind that many teachers will count off for spelling, so it's important that you click this refresh tool before turning in your work to check for spelling mistakes. If I click the refresh button, it's taking care of those issues, and I'm ready to turn in. The other thing that you need to know about the writer tool is that if you don't want to use the writer box, you can type your response in Microsoft Word or some other word processing program. Then save that document to your computer and then you can click the upload button. First you'll click the choose file tool, you'll find the assignment on your computer, open it, and then click the upload button. Once it is uploaded, your assignment will show up right here and you're ready to turn it in. I'll give you an example now. As you can see, I've attached this document and it's ready to be uploaded. If I click the upload button, it takes a little bit of time and then after it's uploaded, I get an upload complete message. It is now time for me to go ahead and turn this assignment in. Now I'm going to take you back out to the Odysseyware main menu to show you a couple of more things that will be helpful as you go throughout your year. If at any time you have trouble with the Odysseyware system and you're unable to reach your lab teacher or your online teacher, you can go to the help menu at the top of the screen and you'll find a 1-800 number that you can call putting you in contact with tech support at Odysseyware. If you have to call this number, please make sure that you tell them that you are a student with the Sand Springs School District and let them know the questions that you have or the trouble that you're having with the system. Please note that they're only available Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 Central Standard Time, so make sure that you're calling during those hours. If at any time you have any other questions throughout the year, please let us know, and we hope that we've helped you with this video, and we look forward to your success during the school year.